Good evening and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Iowa's redistricting process continues tonight as the temporary redistricting advisory committee held another virtual public meeting today with mostly positive feedback being shared. Details now in our top story at five. Taking a look now at the nonpartisan legislative service agencies proposed maps. The most noticeable shift you can see is in the fourth congressional district that would expand from 39 to 44 counties represented currently by Randy Feenstra. This reflects the urbanization there over the last decade in the state with 68 rural counties losing population and metropolitan areas growing. Should be done based on where people are and how we can best serve the community. The current first proposed maps do that. There are no state snakes. There are no districts that look like uh, centipedes. Iowa State Legislature will hold a special session that's set for October 5th, where they will then vote yes or no on the first proposed maps. Meanwhile, in Nebraska, lawmakers there are nearing the end of their legislative session for redistricting. Speaker of the legislature, Mike Hilgers, is threatening to end the session if an agreement cannot be reached by this Sunday. It is a move that would likely delay the state's May 2022 primary election. Lawmakers remain at an impasse over how exactly to redraw Nebraska's congressional and legislative maps. That's to adjust for population losses again in rural areas, plus gains in and around Omaha and Lincoln. An ATV accident over the weekend sent a Nebraska woman to the hospital after she was thrown from that vehicle. The Stanton County Sheriff's Office says a 46-year-old Norfolk woman was the lone rider on that ATV. That's when she hit the so-called guy wire of a utility pole. The incident happened around 515 on Saturday afternoon just off 3rd Street in Stanton. That woman taken to a Norfolk hospital where she had to go get underwent surgery. Smoke and flames billowed from part of the roof at the New Orleans Superdome this afternoon. That fire started as crews worked to clean and prepare the sporting venue for painting. Part of the preparation included crews power washing that roof. You could see the images there on your screen. A Superdome manager says the fire broke out in a section of roof called the gutter tub. New Orleans emergency officials said on Twitter that one person was taken to the hospital with minor burns in this incident. Iowa Republican Senator and veteran Joni Ernst tonight is asking for changes on how exactly the National Mall in Washington, D.C. functions. Ernst and New Hampshire Democrat Maggie Hassan this week introduced some legislation to build a new war memorial right there. This memorial will be 100 percent privately funded and it will be in its rightful place on our National Mall in Washington, D.C. For these families and for our entire country, it's finally time to create a global war on terrorism memorial on the National Mall. A 2003 law prevents new memorials from being built on that National Mall, but Ernst and Hassan say it's time for that to change. I think that our National Mall shouldn't uh, change with the times of the United States. Um, is To think that is regrettable. Ernst failed to get unanimous consent for the bill on Monday of this week, but says she does not expect that to ultimately prevent her bill from passing. A progressive group of lawmakers say they want to protect renters by changing which agency can issue an eviction moratorium. This, of course, comes after the Supreme Court struck down the latest eviction moratorium from the CDC. Our Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson explains. After sleeping on the Capitol steps last month to draw attention to the nation's vulnerable renters. For five days, we experienced what it's like to sleep outside, unable to escape the noisy environment. Missouri Congresswoman Cori Bush is now back with other progressive lawmakers with new legislation preventing evictions. People are being evicted as we speak, as we stand here. The Keeping Renters Safe Act would give the Department of Health and Human Services the authority to issue federal eviction moratoriums. Last month, the Supreme Court ruled that the CDC cannot issue eviction moratoriums unless this type of legislation is passed by Congress. But an extremist Supreme Court cut short eviction protections 
and put millions of people at risk for losing their homes. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren says evictions especially hurt minorities. This crisis falls hardest on black and brown families because they are more likely to be renters. Texas Congressman August Pfluger doesn't support the legislation and blames the Biden administration for overspending. The bigger issue right now is what the administration is doing with all of our taxpayer money that's not actually going towards the people that need it the most. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson. Time now to turn our attention to the weather. Meteorologist Victor Perez standing by. Victor, depends on where you were today. We had some wind, some sun, some fair weather clouds in Siouxland, but overall it did feel like fall. I know you were outside. You probably got <laughs> some was. of that wind with 20 mile per hour gusts in the region. Definitely a little bit of a cooler fall day, but at least we're seeing fall like weather. Right now we're at 69 degrees for the high today. That is a few degrees below the seasonal average of 75. And our low was also a few degrees at 45, but not as low as we're going to be seeing as we go through the evening hours through and start off the day tomorrow. You can see overnight lows in the Siouxland area are going to drop down into the low 40s, some places even reaching up into the upper 30s, barely. Uh, we haven't had any frost advisories issue, but they are beginning to pop up over the last couple days. Uh, I saw some earlier over to the west by the Rockies. Now some frost advisories being extended over by northern portions of Minnesota. More typical up there, but we are going to see temperatures dropping down here in the Siouxland area, pretty close to that. So we're going to be keeping an eye on that for the first frost of the season. Might have to bring in some plants over the next few days. All right, thanks a lot, Victor. We'll check back. In Yankton, South Dakota, we know is playing host to the 2021 World Archery Championships and World Cup this month. While the event helps draw more attention to the sport, they are also benefiting the community. With hundreds of people from 80 countries, all in Yankton, the president of the National Field Archery Association tonight says that the economic benefits for Siouxland are immeasurable. And it, it's great for the city, it's great for the state, and it's great for the tri-state area. Um, you know, we've got people flying into Sioux Falls, Sioux City, Omaha, um, you know, transport buses going around the clock. It, it's just awesome. Call adds that hotels, restaurants, and other businesses are all benefiting from this major event. The archery competitors and competitions continue their games until the end of this month. It is homecoming week in South Sioux City, and this year's royalty are finding some ways to give back, too. Today, members of the court spent time with elementary school students eating lunch, playing at recess, and even reading to the future Cardinals there. The activity gave these high school students a chance to relive their younger days, while also serving as a role model for the next generation. It's really important because they look at us as role models and they're, it's the memories that they take with them and we do as well. And just to, you know, spend that quality time and cherish with them. Friday's homecoming game pits the Cardinals against Omaha Northwest. We wish them luck. President Joe Biden tonight is betting on millions more rapid at-home tests to help curb the latest wave of deadly COVID-19 cases. The Department of Health and Human Services announced a $2 billion plan to purchase rapid tests. But for now, retail chains like CVS and Walgreens have placed some limits on exactly how many at-home tests customers can buy. Rapid testing can be done anywhere and have a 20-minute turnaround time as well. Compare that to most school testing programs that still rely on tests being processed in labs, which those return results need a day or two to process. You know that person, the one who can see the silver lining in just about any situation. Turns out that person is probably reaping some health benefits too from their positive outlook. We're with more, here's ABC's Aika Joshi. We constantly hear that people with positive attitudes may live longer. Researchers at Harvard University studying optimism in men and women found a positive outlook could be linked to living longer. Although it's not known how this works, researchers say applying a cheery mindset every day can lead to healthy, positive change in your life. Health experts say optimism is partly inheritable, and other factors can influence it, like income, education, and geography. But at the end of the day, experts say you can learn to be more optimistic by changing your mindset every day. Some tips to have that upbeat outlook include looking for positive opportunities, like calling a friend while stuck in a long line, focusing on your strengths. If you're creative, try a project you haven't done before. Be thankful for what you have and share that with others. And finally, visualize yourself as your best possible self and work towards it. With this Medical Minute, I'm Aika Giacci. 
A new category of phone hacks is changing the game tonight. How malicious hackers are getting access to your private information coming up in about 10 minutes. Now I'll let you folks know about seasonal temperatures ahead, lack of rain chances popping up on the full forecast, and plenty of sunshine as we go to the next few days all after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us in the sun today. It really did feel nice and everyone who's been cheering for fall weather to really appear and an excuse to get a sweater out. Today was your, your day and tonight looks like your night. Tonight's going to be the night. Maybe bust out a winter jacket right. even, but it does feel really nice out in the sun. I know if you're in the shade, it did feel significantly cooler, at least for the start of the day. As we look out from Wayne, Nebraska, looking out the Wayne State College camp, you can see some students out there, a very active campus, plenty of teams out there practicing, and it wouldn't be too bad to be practicing out there with temperatures now reported in the 60s, so a little bit on the cooler side, 66 degrees. You can see northwest winds still picking up to 16 miles per hour here in Sioux City, 40% humidity values and a dew point at 41 degrees. As at temperatures across the Siouxland area sunny again so we're going to see a nice weekend ahead of us uh, it does look like temperatures at least increase a little bit but overall we're looking at dry weather so drought conditions will more than likely be exacerbated over the next few days over the next few days uh, but you were mentioning this yesterday actually the only real chance we have now to make up that deficit maybe with the snowfall unless we get some maybe <laughs> very heavy autumn cold showers I don't expect to be making up that six inch deficit that That's we still have all right thanks a lot Victor well most people aren't exactly thrilled at the sight of potholes littering a roadway but for one Texas community these road conditions have paved the way for some creative scenes check it out they greet passerby each day for the past week a sinkhole ferry has been paying some special visits to one specific neighborhood, constructing new scenes as a tongue in cheek way of raising awareness to the poor and current road conditions in that community. Pretty cool. Each scene lasts no more than 24 hours before a new setup replaces it. So stay tuned. Not all animal lovers are animal savers, but one woman fills her day doing both. Some of her success stories coming up in about seven minutes we'll share with you. But first, cell phones are packed with sensitive personal data, especially as people use them for banking, buying and selling. The latest way hackers are taking advantage of that next. We have a warning tonight. Phone hackers are getting more sophisticated. Cell phones and all the precious personal data they hold are a prime target for scammers. Plus, now the latest hack doesn't even require you to click on anything. Dan, Diane Hall reports that there is one simple solution. Mountain of personal information on one phone, a gold mine for hackers. It's a huge shift from thinking that our phones are protected to not at all. IT expert Kevin Hodges warns there's a new category of phone hacks that's changing the game, so-called no-click spyware that sneaks onto users' phones without them doing a thing. One such malware, Pegasus, infected phones by simply placing a call to users through WhatsApp, even when they didn't pick up. Pegasus is, is, is huge in that they've, they've using exploits and phones and software to, to install massive pieces of software that can do data mining from your phone and can do it without your input in any way, shape or form. That's a uh, that's 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 huge. For months, the only fix was to turn your phone off and on and the program that lives in your memory will be deleted. But this past week, Apple announced an emergency security update for its iOS that fixes the flaw. While to date, spyware like Pegasus has mainly targeted high profile individuals, other types of phone hacks that blanket large populations are on the rise. Alex High at Stay Mobile says for one, the Google Play Store is flooded with fake apps that are malware in disguise. Free movie app or free MP3 downloader or things like that, <laughs> because there's a lot of those out there and if they for some reason have a date on them, like uh, of Clean Booster 2019 or 2020, any of those don't do it. <laughs> They're a trap. Well, one woman's passion for saving animals has now become her whole life. We take a look inside her rehab facility, plus see the grateful creatures that live there now next. You can call her the real life Dr. Doolittle. She's a woman dedicating her whole life to saving animals. And we want to warn you, some of the pictures in the story are graphic. Andy Fox has more on the work of Gay Frazee. Eleanor, Thelma, Louise. You can spend a lifetime and only meet one Gay Frazee. 
I'm an insane person. <laughs> Kind to the marrow of her bones, Frazy takes injured and sick animals and makes them well and then returns them to the wild. In 2020, she took in 200 rehab animals. This red fox up there in the loft, a shy guy, won't come out but is now back to health. Somebody called me and said there's a terrible mangy fox in my yard and they yeah. trapped them and brought them to me. I don't make a difference to the giant picture but I make a difference to that fox mm -hmm. and that fox and those five deer. One of those deers, this tick-infested one we told you about July 5th. It was Frazy who nursed that fawn back to health, removing one by one at least 500 ticks. Dr. Brad Nadelstein called Frazy to help. So the ticks didn't get to the eye because it was so swollen. Side by side, you can see the improvements and almost perfect today. Based on face markings, this is believed to be that deer. There might be some ongoing issues, but, but not, you know, they resolved enough to, so that they're releasable. We take a live look outside right now over a sunny downtown Sioux City. Victor returns with one more check on your forecast, so stay with us. We do have a chilly night ahead, especially because we've been so spoiled with these summer-like temperatures until just about 48 hours ago. 48 hours ago is what we saw with that cold front moving through the area and with clear skies expected. We're going to see those temperatures really dropping off tonight as we see cool Canadian air continue to get brought into the area. 40 degrees the overnight low with a northwest wind still between 5 to 10. Finally, tomorrow we'll see a shift to southern air, which will lead to temperatures rising a little bit. 72 degrees the forecast high. And then as you look at the 9 on 9 real quick, you'll see temperatures increase over the next few few days. You're looking at 72 tomorrow, 77 on Thursday, but then a weak cold front slides through the area and we're expecting back to the 60s by Friday, but that short lived again as we see temperatures rising by the weekend. So hopefully, Sophie, you can enjoy this sunny and nice weekend at yeah. least. Bit of a roller coaster ride to get to it, but uh, looks like it's worth it. Thanks a lot, Victor. Thank you for joining us. We'll both see you again tonight at six with Tim. Until then, have a great night.